Continuing with the sound mini series, in this video, we're going to talk about another object within the P5 sound library called the P5 envelope. So what is an envelope in the context of sound? An envelope describes how sound changes over time, and we're going to be creating an envelope object to control these changes throughout the different stages of sound, specifically by changing the parameters called attack, decay, sustain, and release. There are three different stages of sound, the beginning, the middle, and the end. And we're going to be controlling two things, amplitude or the volume, and how long it takes to get to that volume. In the beginning stage, those two values are called the attack time and the attack volume. The attack time is how long it takes to get to the attack volume once you start a sound, while the attack volume is actually the maximum amplitude for that particular sound. In the second stage, those two values are called decay time and sustain volume. Sustain volume is the volume in the middle stage, while decay time is how long it takes from the attack volume to get to the sustain volume. And in the last stage, those two values are called the release time and the release volume. And as the name suggests, release time is how long it takes from the sustained volume to get to the release volume. And once we create an envelope object, then we're going to pass it as an argument into the amplitude or amp method within the oscillator class. And hopefully we can generate sound that is more natural or imitate a specific characteristic of an instrument. All right, so what I have here is the sketch that we did in the first episode. And basically, we use the mouse X location to control the amplitude, and we use the mouse Y location to control the frequency or the pitch. So if you don't press the mouse, nothing happens, but this circle just changes color and size. But when I click it, you can see that the X, the mouse X location controls the volume, while the mouse Y location controls the pitch, right, the frequency. And if you look here, how we play or stop sounds, we do it by actually just changing the amplitude, right? So we pass in the amplitude and we also pass the second argument. This essentially is the attack volume and the release volume. And the second argument are the attack time and the release time. But now we're going to introduce the middle part, which is the decay time and then the sustain volume. So let's look at the reference page. Envelopes are predefined amplitude distribution over time. Typically, envelopes are used to control the output volume of an object, a series of phase referred to as attack, decay, sustain, and release. And we're going to be using three different methods here, set range, set ADSR, and play. Set range changes the attack and the release levels, or the amplitudes. Set ADSR changes the attack time, decay time, sustain percent, and release time. So these are the six parameters that we discussed previously. And then the last method is play, which we'll use to play the entire envelope. And as you can see here, they call it sustain percent and not sustain volume or sustain level, right? And that is because it is the percentage that is between the attack level and the release level. First, we need to declare a variable for an envelope. So let's call it env. And then inside setup, we need to create a new envelope object. So env equals to new p5.envelope. Then what we want to do is, first I want to declare those six variables. So let's call it attack level. Let's set that to one. Sustain ratio. Let's set that to 50%. And release level, which we want to set at zero. And then attack time, let's do it a very fast attack time, decay time. How about we have it go a little bit slower at 0 0.1 second. And then the last one is release time at, let's do it very quick as well. And then now we just need to use the two methods env.setRange. This one is setting the attack level and the release level, right? So we just pass in these two, attack level and release level. And then the second one is set ADSR. And in here, we need to put in attack time, decay time, sustain ratio, and release time. 
And then once we create the envelope object, then we pass it into here, into our amplitude method here, env. And instead of calling the amplitude here when we click the mouse, what we need to do is we just need to play the envelope and we can do that by just calling the play method. All right, let's try it. Because I use mouse is pressed as a conditional statement here, I'm afraid that when I release the mouse, then it just released the sound right away. So what I want to do is that I want to make sure that the release time actually impacts what I'm doing here. So I'm going to create a new function called mouse pressed. And then I'm going to also create a Boolean variable called play, set it as false. And every time that I click the mouse, then I'm going to set this variable to the opposite value of what it was originally. So once I do this in here, I'm going to say that if play is true, then we play the sound. I'm actually going to delete this. And then once we play it, then we're going to set play to false. All right, let's try it again. Even if I press really long, the release time because it's so short, It just ends really abruptly. Let's say that I change this to 0 0.5. You hear the difference? If I do one. What if I make it such that it takes a long time to get to attack level? All right. How about we increase the sustain level? And what if we don't put release level to zero? If we keep it at 0 0.6. And you see when we release it, then it actually stops at 0 0.6 amplitude. So we actually want to end it. All right, so this is how you can use an envelope to add a little bit more complexity to your amplitude levels and control the sound this way. Stay tuned for the next episode.